Hi, I'm Lara Kodeka, a research fellow at Trinity College Dublin, and I'm here to present Saga, an activity-based multimodal mobility scenario generator for Sumo. Saga is a framework that enables the generation of city-scale traffic simulation. The reason why it's useful is because it's going to reduce the amount of expert knowledge that is required to make them realistic. Why is it really needed? Um, lately, I noticed that everyone wants to actually build their own city. Why? Maybe because a lot of ideas problem requires a lower solution. And anyway, because if you have your own scenario, you can have real world application. It's easier to local to partner up with local uh, industries and it looks always good on proposal. Building this kind of scenarios is actually a very long and iterative process that requires a lot of testing and validation. This actually means that having an automated pipeline is gonna save you a lot of time. Where does it come from? Before I actually built other scenario. Here I want to talk about the most scenario that is available on GitHub. I built it over the span of one year and it's still an ongoing process when new feature of Sumo are coming out. And during this time, I actually had to learn everything that is required to build a multimodal mobility simulation with activity-based mobility. And that is actually the outcome. It was Saga that is available in the Sumo Contributor tool. And the idea is that you have an automated pipeline to do fast prototyping. A handmade scenario is always gonna be better than one prototype built in in less than a week. But the idea is that all the expertise required is actually encoded in the tool. So we have a problem and we decided that we are gonna solve it using a mobility simulator. So the first step, is actually deciding a location and using OpenStreetMap to actually extract the data. Once you have the OpenStreetMap, the first iteration of Saga begins. In the first iteration, it's gonna generate all the infrastructure and the environment, and it's gonna provide the first version of the activity-based mobility. It's gonna spit out a lot of intermediate configurations. And with this intermediate configuration and additional data that you can find locally, you can start the iterations over and over to actually improve your scenario. An example, public transportation. If you have additional information on the public transportation, the defaults provided by Saga are never gonna be good, but you can actually tune through the configuration file and put your changes in the loop in order to keep the iteration to fix your scenario. Once you're satisfied with the results, you have the final Sumo configuration and you have your mobility simulation. What is the activity-based mobility generation and why we need it? The thing is, if we want to have realistic mobility, we actually need to build a mobility that is similar to how people move around. The easy example is that this was before COVID, though. The easy example is that from home, you go to work, and in the meanwhile, maybe you have to drop the kids to school. So you have a series of activity, and that's the reason why you're moving. So here we actually have the activity defined as a start time and a duration. And then the tricky part begins, that is how to define the location. In Saga, you can define three types of activity. The home, that is a placeholder and is gonna be the origin of your trip. The primary, that is gonna be the destination and for example, is gonna be work. And a secondary and multiple secondary activities. That is actually the tricky part in defining the location. Here, for example, we can see that if we have a chain that is going to move us from home to the primary, and then we have a secondary and back home, is more likely that a person to optimize is going to go home to the primary, and then the location of the secondary is going to be between the two. The, similarly, if you have a chain that is gonna bring you from home, primary home, and only then you're gonna have a secondary activity, it's more likely that the secondary activity is gonna be closer to the home. 
Similarly, on the other side, we have the same thing in which if we go home primary, secondary, and primary, and then home, it's likely that the secondary activity is going to be close to the primary. An easy example for this one, it was going to lunch uh, when you were at work. So you can actually, you have user-defined activity chains that are the one that we discuss here. And for each of them, you have a probability distribution and with them, you have the associated transportation mode. So everything at the end is to build the mobility. That's the last step. We need a lot of stuff before we can actually be there. We need the infrastructure, road, public transport, the parking areas. And then you need the environment, like buildings, point of interest, the, tra the traffic assignment zone. And only then we can start to talk about the demand with the audiometrics and the activities. And at the end, we can finally generate the mobility. This actually means that you have a lot of iteration that are going to provide incremental improvement. The idea of Saga is to provide modules that are going to extract everything that you need. In green, you can see that Saga is using Sumo tools in order to, uh, to work faster. And everything that is not already provided in the Sumo tool is uh, implemented by Saga with separated modules. The easy idea to think about this pipeline is that you have a lot of uh, input file, configuration file, and output file, and they are going to be inserted. An example, if you want to work on bike, bicycle sharing, Saga has nothing already done to extract the additional information about your bike sharing problem. Nonetheless, you can build a single module and insert it in the generation and in your pipeline. In the same way, something that I have to do quite often is to remove modules if they are not doing what I want. For example, if you want to do parking optimization, it's better to remove the summer routers in order to have the cars doing what you want and not what the routers are meant to be doing. So now that we have this, we can finally move to the, activity, to the mobility generation. And first, we need to know what is the demand definition. Here is configured in slices, where for each slice, you have the percentage of the, the population that you want, the origin task, the destination task, and the activity chain distribution uh, that is associated to it. An activity chain is defined with a probability of a specific chain and the list of mode associated with it. So if we now narrow down to the person plan, we have to start from the selection of the home location in terms of the actual edge. Then we select the primary location edge. And then we select one activity chain from the distribution. And only then we, start, we can start to compute where are all the location for the secondary locations, uh, for the secondary activities. Once we have that, we can generate a complete time-based sequence and we can finally move to the person plan. In order to build the person plan, it depends on the mode selection. If you define your mode with a probability, then it's gonna select only one mode in the list and that is gonna be your trip. If you selected the weight, you is gonna compute a plan for every mode that you have in your list and is gonna select only the best plan. We had to make some assumption on the parking. The first is that if you're at home, you don't need to park. I know it's not always true, but it simplifies things. If you are using a bicycle, you can park it wherever on the side. On-demand vehicles and the service one do not require parking at all. And the selected V type that you specified are required to park. So the use case that I want to present to you is fast prototyping. I cherry picked two scenarios. The first one is the DLR, uh, is the area around the DLR in Berlin. And the other one is the area called Docklands in Dublin in Ireland. That is where I live. 
it's very important to realize that the best case and the worst case is re the really means only how good is the data in OpenStreetMap that you have in that location at the first run. Here we are talking about fast prototyping, so it's only the first run. If we check the DLR area, that is 21 square kilometers, I can run the entire thing in less than 35 minutes from the initial generation to the final sumo simulation on my laptop. There are 1,400 generation failures, and those are the one that happens when, given the random locations, actually the two locations are not connected and the plan is not usable. In this case, you have only 16 teleports and zero emergency stop. This scenario is practically perfect, probably because the DLR is exactly there. Nonetheless, is our best case. If we think about Docklands instead, it's very different. It's only a six uh, square kilometers, and this scenario is done in less than 10 minutes. The number of generation failure is not that high, it's 1,800. There is only 31 teleports, but the crucial thing is that you have almost 500 emergency stops. If you check where are the majority of these emergency stops, you are actually going to see all the broken connection in the network. That is something that everybody that is building scenario has to deal with. Nonetheless, what I'm presenting you here is that you actually have a prototype in less than 10 minutes that you can use if you are an expert to start changing things and insert it in your pipeline. If you have never done anything like that before, now you have actually a checklist of everything that you have to look for, all the data that are missing and everything that is broken in one checklist one step at a time to actually make your scenario. And if you need to do a, vis a feasibility study to know should you even try to do this scenario, you can have it in 10 minutes. So to conclude, with Saga, there is better automation. You can use it for fast prototyping. It provides pipeline and iterative generation, and it's built upon modular components. It actually provides a checklist that if you're a new user, you're practically buying expert knowledge. And if you're an expert, you can have user-defined intermediary, intermediary configuration file that you can do whatever thing you want with it. Considering the future work, I'm trying to use the land use information to improve the auto-generated audiometrics. Because think about it, if I know that the land use is commercial, it's more likely that if you define a primary location as work or you can go there or a secondary location as shopping and so on. The real issue is that land use in OpenStreetMap is poorly used, well-defined, but poorly used. So we have to, I have to work on an heuristic for that. Finally, the taxi fleet. I seriously want to introduce the taxi fleet that is a new Sumo feature. The problem there is that in order to have taxis, I need to, have to set a lot of arbitrary decision making. And the idea with, of Saga is that it's not going to do the decision for you. Everything should be configurable, so you are going to get exactly what you want. So here I will have to find a way to have arbitrary decision-making, user-configurable arbitrary decision-making. I want to conclude saying that this work started in Eurocom. I have to say thank you to Jakob because without him, it would not be in the Sumo Contributed Tools. And now that I'm Trinity College, as you can see, I'm still working on it. So you can find it in the Sumo Contributed Tool or on my GitHub. Thank you for your time.